Lately, we've seen a lot of hot hatches. What does that mean? This car is fun to drive and has some great utility, but best of all, you can use it year round. We'll show you the N-Line from Hyundai. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix, and today we're gonna to show you the 2020 Hyundai Elantra GT, but this is the N-Line. Now we've reviewed the Elantra before and you can check that out up here. What we have for you today is a fun little hot hatch. What does hot hatch mean? In this case, it's a four door and there's a lot of competition like the Jetta and the Civic, but this has a hatchback so you can put the seats down and get more storage. So it gives you a lot of utility, a lot of flexibility, and it's a fun car to drive. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than just car reviews. We give you great information so that you have car smarts. We give you first looks and some neat information. Make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything. When you look on the Hyundai website, you'll see that there's an Elantra GT and a GT with the N line. And that means that this has a lot more standard features and it's a lot more sporty. We'll take it for a test drive and give you car coach reports, ratings and performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating comfort, which is important, all the way through value. There are 10 different categories. And at the end, we're gonna give you a total. So when you go to the dealer and consider purchasing this or looking at the competition, you'll have some information. You'll know what to expect because the salesperson's not gonna take the time to explain to you all the little details that we're gonna go over. Let's go for a ride. The Elantra GT is powered by a two liter engine with 161 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque. But this is the N line engine. It is a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine with 201 horsepower and 169 pound feet of torque. It's backed up by two transmission options. My favorite, the six speed manual, or if you prefer, you can go with a dual clutch seven speed automatic transmission that has paddle shifts. The difference is the drive mode is available on the automatic. There's a button for changing that. There is no drive mode change for the manual transmission. My foot's in it. Let's go, baby. Just getting to the speed limit. I wish it had a little bit more power. You got that 1.6 liter turbo, just get that little, that little zip would just make it. I've been driving this vehicle for about a week. It looks great. And I had high expectations when you call something a GT and an N line, your natural reaction is it's gonna have some get up and go. I was actually kind of disappointed. It was kind of sluggish. And when you really put your foot in it, it's not spirited. I'm disappointed. I, I would think it would have some more power. When you look at the Veloster N, it seems to have more power. It may not based on the tuning, but when you're comparing the two, they're not the same class, but when you're trying that N line that you're expecting a certain expectation of performance. And unfortunately, I found that disappointing. The fact that Hyundai offers the six speed manual, I give them major kudos. Certain brands like Volkswagen, Mini, they've always been known for their manual transmissions. And that's part of the performance side of this. One thing that aggravates the hell out of me is I'm now at uh, 3,500 RPM and it's telling me to upshift to fourth. And I was in third and I'm thinking, now it's telling me to go to sixth. I'm in third gear and it wants me to do a jump over to sixth at 3,200 RPM. Not gonna do that. I don't like the suggestions because it's trying to do it based on fuel economy. Now, if there was a performance mode, they would tell you just to ignore the upshift. So I'm telling you, if you buy this vehicle, ignore the upshift unless you're looking for fuel economy. And that part of it I find disappointing. The positives of this vehicle is it is fun to drive. It goes, it's enough to keep you out of trouble and you can certainly get on on-ramp, pass a vehicle if you drop down to a lower gear. And that's some of the bonuses that you can do when you're controlling the performance with a manual transmission. Now, if you decide to go with the automatic, the dual clutch with the, you know, the flappy paddles, it's a different story. And I think that's gonna be something you'll be allowed to go into a sport mode without placing it there yourself. So when it comes to performance as a whole, this is a real fun daily driver, absolutely enough power to get you where you wanna be, but compared to the competition, it earns a seven. What you're getting on the 2020 N-Line is a multi-link independent rear suspension. That makes the handling fun. It makes it go into corners. Now, even when you're taking off from a red light, like I'm about to do, one of the things that I expect is the car to squat down, transfer the weight, and take off. 
that doesn't always happen that way on a vehicle that's underpowered like this. This is not a Mustang. It's not a Camaro. It's not a Corvette. This is a very well-tuned suspension compared to the previous generation. I think when you're looking at this vehicle compared to the Mazda 3 or the Volkswagen GTI, you're going to get a different experience. And I think that's something you need to test drive all the vehicles in this category. This is not a bad vehicle by any means. Is this a race car? Mm -mm, no way. And so you have to know that this is a fun spirited ride that can be made to be an amazing car with all these aftermarket parts. Now I'm sure that Hyundai is going to eventually come up with all that if they're not already selling it at certain dealers. But as it stands right now, the handling is really good. It is well tuned. It is very specific and the brakes are great. But compared to the competition in the hot hatch class, it earns an eight. Now, safety features are something that are really important in any vehicle. We talk about this all the time. This vehicle has forward collision warning, has pedestrian cross traffic alert, it has rear cross traffic alert, it has lane change departure, it has a backup camera, it has a lot of safety features that you do not get in other vehicles. And some vehicles you have to buy up, and other vehicles is just not available. The one big thing this vehicle has in safety and why it earned a nine, it's an IIHS top safety pick plus. That means this vehicle is really safe and it earned a nine. When you're looking at this vehicle as far as visibility, it has a very long, very large front piece of glass, which I do appreciate. The window sills are low and that's great because now you've got more vision and that's really what is the ability to see. You've got your side view mirrors, your backup camera, but looking out the back, one thing this vehicle has is a long piece of glass and it's designed in such a way that it gives you pretty good visibility. However, that blind spot in the right rear is a big piece of metal. It's not Alaska size, but it's has its issues, which is why the safety features are important. And you want that blind spot detection. Even with the headrests out of the way, it's not bad at all. Better than most vehicles in this category, and it earned an eight. When you sit in the driver's seat, this is the most important seat because you're driving the vehicle and there are great side bolsters that hold you in now again it's based on how you're built if you're a larger person it may be very uncomfortable so make sure to sit in this vehicle before you make a final purchase never buy a car without test driving it on the side you have manual adjustments on both driver and passenger side this seat seems to have a little bit of lumbar built into it but i somehow don't feel it as much on the passenger side there shouldn't really be a difference but this is just a comfort factor so make sure you sit in the driver's side and the passenger passenger side and if you got kids let them sit in the back because the last thing you want to do is have everybody kicking the back of your chair and make sure there's room underneath those seats for your feet let's take a look at the second row in the second row there is pretty good head and shoulder room and actually really good knee room because i set the seat for me and i'm 5 8 so that tells you there's a lot of leg room in here the one thing if you're the middle rider you're probably not going to be too comfortable because it is kind of tight when you pull down the center console, you have two really simple cup holders. They're great. They're easy to use, but there is no charging port at all. There's only two vents in the door is small carriers for whatever drink that you'd like. And there's window lifts. Pretty simple, but keep in mind, this is not an expensive car. However, having lumbar on the driver's side, but literally nothing on the passenger side, just manual adjustment. I had to give it a six for seating. When you're looking at technology, there's a lot of different features depending upon the classification of the car. So we're looking at the gauges and they're regular gauges. And actually that's really good. If you press this button right here, you will change the displays. The displays will not just give you whether things are open or not and how things work, but also you can set it for miles per hour. You can set it for different information just by changing the buttons. Pretty simple right there on the steering wheel. So it's not so difficult. Going down to the steering wheel, you've got your cruise control all, as well as your pages to change. And then on this side, you have your modes for your audio. You can use your blue link, which is a feature. We'll talk about that next. It's also a technology because it's something that Hyundai has gone to a lot of trouble to put together. Going over here to the center stack, this is your standard home screen. You can press the button for radio. You can also touch the screen. So again, this is something that allows you those options, whether you're driving or not. Everybody's different. A lot of people don't like the touch screen. Also, you've got your media set up here. If you've got that, you can set your tracks. There's also an apps page here, which allows you to download certain apps as well as Android Auto, Apple CarPlay is standard. You've got Infinity Audio System with eight speakers pretty standard setup voice commands and you can set up different things depending upon how you would like to have that 
and then you've got your home button here. Pretty basic, not advanced. Some of the competition has more. You've got your vents and your climate control. There is no wireless charging here, but you do have your USB, your regular 12 volt. Heated seats, ventilated seats are an option. Our vehicle did not have that. It came in in that $24,000 range. We'll talk about that with value, but it does have this. One thing that I call technology, but not everyone does, is this vehicle has the six-speed manual transmission, which I prefer. The one technology I hate on this car is the when it tells you to upshift. You're doing like under 2,000 RPM, and it wants you to shift up to fifth gear. I'm not doing that. That may be great for fuel economy. I'm looking for a little bit of fun and a hot hatch. So when it came to technology, I gave it an eight. There are a lot of features on this N vehicle, including the Hyundai N steering wheel, which has this really cool red stitching. I think they did a really nice job in the details. Nothing special other than I really do like the red detail that goes around this vent. Pretty cool. Regular gauges, easy to use, which I like. You've also got your windshield washer, front and rear as well as your turn signal and your headlights. Remember, if you buy an automatic with a seven speed, you'd have your paddle shifts here, which obviously would not be the case. You also have a drive mode button, which is also not on this. Here is your center stack with blue link, which is standard. You've got your really nice vents. And then down below, you have your climate control. You have some storage. You can get a wireless charging system as well here. Our vehicle has heated seats, no air-cooled seats, manual transmission. Going further back, you've got two cup holders with a little cover, which is nice if you want to hide something. You've got your parking brake and your auto holds a little bit of storage. In the glove box, there is a 12-volt charger. That's it. In the back, there is no charging. So that kind of limits you on what's available on features. So when it comes to features, we gave it an eight. One of the things that's specific to the Elantra GT M line is this waterfall grill. You're not gonna see it on the regular GT. And there are a couple other details that are specific to this model. All LED headlights and daytime running lights. The regular Elantra GT has 17 inch alloy wheels. This is 18 inch alloy wheels and they have the optional Michelin summer performance tires. You'll also note LED tail lights. You got your Elantra GT, more marker lights, and the N-Line badging, as well as dual exhaust. For design, we gave it an eight. When you're looking at quality, there are a lot of factors. It's not just the exterior and the quality of the build. It's also the interior and the materials. They need to be soft touch. They need to have real stitching. And when there's a flaw in little areas, we have to knock it down a few points. While they truly offer great value and Hyundai owns their own metal plant, there is a lot of top quality in this product. But when it came to quality for this specific vehicle, we gave it a nine. Going around to the back, when you open the hatch, there's 24.9 cubic feet of storage, which is really good. Also underneath this cover is a mini spare, which is much better than run flats because it's cost less to get new tires. Something to consider when you're thinking about value. Put these two rear seats down that are 60, 40 split and you have 55 cubic feet of storage. Now our test vehicle came in at $24,690. That's a really good value. And Hyundai does have great value because it includes maintenance for three years, 36,000 miles. 10 year 100,000 mile warranty, which only Kia and Hyundai offer. So I gave it a value score of nine. Now there are a lot of competitors in this marketplace and everybody's kind of fighting for that small segment. You've got Mazda and Honda, Toyota. I mean, think about all of the competition. Make sure to test drive all those different vehicles before you make a final decision and then check with your insurance company to find out what the rates are because some are much less than others. Of course, there's a lot of other factors involved in that too. There's a link to our channel down below in the description. Now, when you're looking at the total value, you've got performance, handling, safety, there's a lot included. Some really specific items to the M line that make this vehicle a little bit unique. When you total everything up, you get a total score of 80. If you got value from this video and you'd like to see more like it, make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button and we'll send you more information as we post it. Please put your comments down below. Are you a hot hatch person? Do you love this car? Did you buy something else? What did you buy? We want to know. We want to start the conversation and open the community. And I do answer questions. So if I didn't get to something that you wanted to know about, like top crash test ratings, it's an IIHS top safety pick. Let me know. I'll get the information for you and I'll put it down below so that everyone can share in that. Thank you so much for being a patron on our Patreon page. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.